SpaceX Starlink's big brother, Star Shield, may save the planet. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a, I guess you would call it a tech day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink's big brother, Star Shield. I wanna get your thoughts on this. I'm gonna read an article over on CNBC and give you some more information on some of the other websites that I've read. And I wanna get your thoughts on this. Also, if, I gotta do a little bit of housekeeping here. If you have picked up any of the teas, Dark Moon teas, I have to apologize to you. I've already sent emails to a lot of you. There is a back order on the organic ingredients that we use, and I'm not gonna pick up anything else. It has to be the best of the best. So there's been a couple of weeks now that have went by. I appreciate your patience, but supposedly that is going to be cleared up this week. So expect those teas to come out to you soon. Also, if you're looking for more security when you're surfing the web or just simply want to be more anonymous and not have every single site track your every single move, consider using a VPN. I'm using PureVPN. The nice folks over there at PureVPN provided me with a URL that I can give you that will give you an additional discount. The link will be in the description as well as the pinned comment. And don't forget to use promo code JCristina. So let's get right into this story. Now I went over to SpaceX's website to go and read about this a little bit. Obviously this is once again, the big brother of Starlink. It is Star Shield, and there's minimal information on there. I'll show it on the screen so you can see what it looks like. But the CNBC article is gonna talk all about it anyways. So the article starts out with Elon Musk, SpaceX is expanding its Starlink satellite technology into military applications with a new business line called Star Shield. Star Shield is likely to further tap the company's biggest US government customer, the Pentagon, which already represents a high valued buyer of SpaceX's launches and has shown significant interest in the capabilities of Starlink. Makes sense, they should. Quote, while Starlink is designed for consumer and commercial use, Star Shield is designed for government use. On its website, SpaceX said that it'll have an initial focus of three areas, imagery, as well as communication and hosted payloads. The third of which effectively offers the government customer the company's satellite bus or the inner body of the spacecraft as a flexible platform. The company also markets Starshield as the center of an end-to-end -end offering for national security. SpaceX would build everything from the ground antennas to satellites, launch the ladder with its rockets, and operate the network in space. Operate the network in space. Remember in the past, I talked about how I believe Starlink could possibly become its own network, its own internet as such, whereas there's no ground traffic besides the traffic that's being beamed down, where some of these satellites will be massive, they will be like NOx or network operation centers. So all of that data transaction could happen at the speed of light in LEO or in low Earth orbit. Sounds like it here. Sounds like it. Once again, I always like reading articles for the face value, but then dig in a little deeper. Now, SpaceX notes that Starshield uses, quote, additional high assurance cryptographic capability to host classified payloads and process data securely, end quote building upon the data encryption currently being used on the Starlink system. Another key feature, the Intersatellite Laser Communication Link, what we just talked about, ISL, which allows the satellites to communicate at the speed of light through lasers between each other, forming a network, which the company currently has connected in the Starlink spacecraft. It notes that terminals can be added to partner satellites so as to connect other companies or government systems into the Starshield network. Interesting. SpaceX continues to build out the Starlink system with the company's last week's winning of the FCC approval for expansion. The company's leadership has previously estimated that Starlink could bring as much as $30 billion in revenue per year. We calculated about 16 to 20 billion, but 30 billion really wouldn't be a problem, especially once government 
gets on board. We'll talk about that in just a second. But the Starship represents a step beyond commercial markets. The Pentagon has already made it clear that it is willing to spend heavily to have companies build out next generation satellite capabilities. Hence, Starshield. We can see a rendering here of something that they have on their website. It says this rendering shows Starshield's intersatellite link or ISL creating an invisible mesh network in orbit. Now, when I look at this image, I don't see ISL at all. What do you see? The reason I say that is we're showing satellites here, two regular satellites and then one that looks like it has a camera on board or possibly a laser targeting system. But you see the lasers are not connecting to each other. Now, the way ISL works is there's a laser that goes from satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite. This image that they show has these lasers pointing downward, supposedly creating a mesh network. Now, we know that Elon just loves to hide meaning. When I look at this picture, that's an Easter egg to me. All right. Now, maybe you don't see it that way. All right. Maybe it's just a mess up on the drawing that SpaceX did. SpaceX makes rocket ships that go to the moon, <laughs> possibly to Mars. It's probably not a mistake. Anyways, that's just my opinion. Remember, guys, back in 1983, I think it was March, Ronald Reagan came up with, remember this, SDI or the Strategic Defense Initiative? What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished before the end of this century. I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. And I remember the news crews always called it the Star Wars program. And then finally, it was called the Star Wars program. And basically what that was, a means of preventing a Soviet attack. The Soviets at the time were making missile after missile after missile, ICBMs or intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads on them right? By the hundreds, by the thousands, enough to destroy the entire planet. Well, that's what was going on. And Ronald Reagan said, well, instead of us making more and more missiles and say, look, my missiles are bigger than your missiles, or I have more missiles than your missiles. He said, you know what? How do we change that around? We know that the best offense is a amazing defense, right? Defense is what is so important. So instead of creating more and more missiles, the idea was to use a system to knock out these ICBMs or intercontinental ballistic missiles before coming back into our atmosphere in our location. So if we were able to knock out their missiles when they were still in the upper atmosphere, well, it's going to cause a lot less damage to Earth, obviously. You may have some nuclear fallout and other problems, but you're not going to end up with those megaton explosions and contaminating our entire United States. So the idea was to use ground base as well as satellite-based lasers to knock out these ICBMs. That was the idea. Now, the technology had to be advanced at the time because we didn't have the technology to be able to track those missiles as well. Today, we can. Back then, using a laser to blow up a missile wasn't a problem, but to lock on the missile was a lot harder. Hence, Starlink, or now Star Shield. Think about this, guys. Think about it. Elon Musk, SpaceX Starlink has navigation, let's say, in spades. It can track everything and it can track it extremely well. And the more and more satellites that you have in LEO or low Earth orbit, the easier it's going to be able to track ICBMs. Now we know a five watt laser, highly focused, can blow a hole through concrete, right? So it doesn't take a lot of watts to be able to make this work. 
The biggest problem is to get that laser to lock onto the missile and stay locked on while the missile is traveling at thousands of miles per hour. Well, this might not be a problem anymore. Now, I know there's going to be people out there that are going to say, hey, Joe, you know, you got this all wrong. You're all wet behind the ears. We see that Russia jammed Starlink over there in the Ukraine, right? So they can do this. Yes, they can. But it takes a ton of energy to do it from the ground, number one. Number two, it's highly focused, right? So they can only hit so many satellites that are overhead. Maybe they could hit 10 satellites. Maybe they could hit 50 satellites. But currently, Elon has 3,500 satellites. You're not going to hit them all. That's number one. Number two, they're looking at about 12,000 in the not-so-distant future and possibly up to 42,000 of these satellites up there in LEO. Now, some of those satellites will probably be part of StarShield. Remember, StarShields are going to be a bigger satellite, kind of like what I was talking about with NOx or Network Operation Centers. They'll just be larger satellites that have payloads, probably from the government, and most likely those payloads will probably include lasers, but not lasers for communication, probably lasers to destroy missiles. This isn't far-fetched, right? I, I don't think so. So we once again, we read between the lines here. Am I wrong? I could be, but I don't think so. I really don't think so. Remember, I talked to you guys about this in the past where I do believe that SpaceX Starlink can have its own network in the air, in LEO, and never have to go to ground only when it needs to. And to now have that extended, let's say, capability of encryption that they're talking about, it, where it's military grade, even stronger than what Starlink already has, I think it'll be incredible. Now, let's look at it from a bigger picture. What would this do? If Elon Musk was able to create Starshield to be able to defend against nuclear attack, let's say from Russia, from whoever, some rogue country that has a missile that they want to launch, an ICBM, to the U.S., so what would this do? Well, it would stop them from doing it because they know it's not going to work. If they launch one of these ICBMs and we blow it up in their atmosphere over their land, they're going to end up being contaminated with the radiation that they want to hit us with, right? So they're not going to do it. Once again, this is a preventative. It's defense instead of offense. And if this does work and come to fruition, well, we don't need to continuously make more and more and more nuclear devices because the point is moot at that point. Point is moot at that point. Yes, it is. Because those missiles will be able to be destroyed while in the upper atmosphere. So less nuclear bombs is good, right? And also the idea of preventing World War III is a definite possibility. World War III would mean the destruction of this planet. If they launch missiles and we launch missiles, the amount of nuclear fallout on the planet would destroy everything. It would be a nuclear winter for thousands and thousands of years. So inadvertently, accidentally, or on purpose, Elon Musk could possibly be saving the planet with SpaceX Star Shield. It's a possibility. Am I wrong? Huh. Could be. But... I just want to give you my thoughts on it. I think it is very, very interesting. I think it's fascinating. It also talks a little bit about that IPO. Remember, we did a video, maybe I'll stick it here, about the IPO and how I think that an IPO would do really well and I'm all in. And I remember the Motley Fool said, hey, I think that they can only make about $16 billion per year. And SpaceX was saying more like 30 and possibly 60. And at the time I was saying, you know, these numbers are not right because they're not taking into consideration the government, right? And I know some people were like, ah, you're kind of crazy. Other people were like, yes, I get it. I believe you. Well, this is a perfect, absolutely a perfect example of that. If the DOD, the Department of Defense, gets on board and starts doing a lot of this with SpaceX, this Star Shield. You're talking billions and billions and billions and billions. Forget a 30 billion. We're talking hundreds of billions, right? We're talking a lot of money to be able to create this. And I would have to say they're going to do it. 
As I always say, what I think is really not important. It's more what you think. This channel is all about us, this communication back and forth and building a community. So let's have this discussion down in the comment area below this video. Put your thoughts. I want to know what you think. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What do you see for this SpaceX Star Shield? If you enjoyed this content, even in the least, as I always say, please throw this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want more Starlink coverage, I have about a hundred, maybe a hundred plus videos just about Starlink, how to make things, what to buy, what not to buy, how to's, tips, tricks, all kinds of stuff. Go check out that Starlink playlist. And finally, head over to my website, jcristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there they might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.